team and welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Galesburg. I am so happy that you are joining us for worship, that you are coming here to praise God, and we are thrilled. So let us worship God today, beginning with our call to worship. As early followers of Jesus gathered for fellowship and worship, praying and singing and reading the scriptures, so we gather in our homes this morning. We read in Acts that the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. One heart, one soul. They shared everything, everything they owned, everything they had. God's grace was at work in them, powerfully at work within them all. There was not a needy person among them. May it be so for us as well, this day and always. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me. I want to share a sign of peace with you. And today I light this candle in honor of each one of you worshiping here today, knowing that even though we are separated physically, we are united spiritually in the light and love of Jesus Christ, our living Lord. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Friends, I I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Leave a comment, give a like, text a friend, say a prayer for someone you love. Show peace, share peace. Today our greetings are from the Shuvies. This week we had a great lunch, a staff lunch on Tuesday, and I invite you to watch this video because I presented them with all of the cards and the notes and the offering that you sent And here was their reaction. Hi, church family. Um, This is my, (laughs) this is a surprise. We had, we come over for Lois's 90th birthday. Say hi, Lois. Happy birthday, Lois. We are socially distancing. As you can see, we're socially distancing. And Annalise is here. And Monica and Kinley, say hi. Hi. So we had a staff lunch today to send off Sandra. She leaves this coming Saturday, which would be yesterday if we're watching this in church. Anyway, you can figure that out. (laughs) I apparently am now in Denver. So now we, what had happened was we came over for lunch and an awesome birthday cake that Annalise made for Lois. And we were surprised with a bunch of cards and letters sent to us from, um, our All church family <laughs> and we had no idea we can't thank you enough for for being so kind and thoughtful there's like we had no idea so we haven't even looked at these yet. We haven't looked yet so all we can say is wow and thank you so much we love our church family and you know that now just for the record my my lovely wife will be not <laughs> with us in church for a while but she's there in spirit yes 
And I'm still here in town, and if you need anything from us, just give us a holler or call Annalise, and she'll hook, she'll hook you up with me and stuff. But I don't know what else to say. Was that all? <laughs> I'll just say we love you so much. This, you know, yes, it's, I'm glad to go back to my parents, but this has been home for a very long time. <laughs> I think we figured out it was just under 30 years, and you have been my church family, and you've been my family, and... That's why I'm not going to say goodbye, because you will always be my church family, and I will be joining you Sunday mornings, and I just want you to know how much you have blessed me. All of the kids, oh my goodness, kids, I was looking at all of your names just today, and you are treasures, and I will continue to be watching you grow into the people who will make this world a better place, and all of you, I just love my church family, and I will miss you more than I can say. Thank you all very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you for 32 years of, of serve, for letting me serve the church as well. And I'm so blessed to be able to work with awesome people like Lois and Annalise for the short distance that we've we had her at the church. She's been awesome. And Monica, we love her to death as well. And thank you to all of you. You guys have been our family. For all and you these still years. are. And you will always be our family. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, as we say goodbye to Mike and Sandra, we thank you for the gift of knowing them. Lord, we thank you that our pilgrim journeys have been able to align for so long, that we've been able to walk together and serve you together and love together and be together. And Lord, now that the Shubis are striking off on a different path. May we remember that each one of our paths still lead to the same place, still lead to you, to your kingdom, to your eternal will. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon them that as Sandra begins her new job tomorrow, as Mike finishes up his work here, that you will be with them, giving them strength and sustaining them. Lord, bless each one of them. Hold them in your loving arms. Now and forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Listen now for God's word. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Friends, this is God's word for us today. Thanks be to God. We continue on our theme of how to be the first century church in a 21st century world. And today's message is all about take time to see. Take time to see. I love this story of Peter and John going to the temple. They're going to worship with everyone else. And as they're going in, they see a man. Now, this is the kind of person that is easy to pass by. Because as the scripture tells us, he's been lame 
from birth. He's never been able to walk. He's never been able to do anything other than sit at the temple gate, the beautiful gate, and beg for alms day after day after day. And so I imagine that most people just kind of started walking by him. He would say, please, can I have some money? Please, can I have something? This was the only way that he was able to afford to live, to eat, was to sit at the gate and beg. And most people probably walked right by him. Maybe they tossed him a coin as they were walking in to make themselves feel better. Pat themselves on the back, job well done, friend. You threw a coin at the beggar in need. But nobody stopped to see him. Nobody took the time to see this man at this beautiful gate. He was not welcomed into the temple because under traditional Judaic law, he was considered unclean. Because of his lameness, he was not part of the worshiping community. He sat outside of the worshiping community and begged for those going in to praise God. And I think you can easily see how this translates to the 21st century world. There are so many people that we see on the side of the road that we pass by. There are so many people that we see as we walk down the sidewalk that we pass by. There are so many people that we continually seek to ignore. We put up our blinders. Someone is sitting on the sidewalk with all of their bags, with all of their possessions around them, and we put on blinders. And we act like we can't see them. Or maybe we see someone who is asking for money and we hand them a sandwich and we pat ourselves on the back and say, good job, friend, but we don't know anything about that person. We haven't really seen that person. All we have seen is there's someone needy and I can help them. But Peter and John stop. And this is what is amazing to me. They stop and they stare at this guy. And they say, look at us. Peter says, look at us. And they have this moment of intense eye contact. And this man sitting at the beautiful gate is wondering what is going on. And he probably has his hands out waiting for a coin. Waiting. And Peter tells him, I don't have any money. Silver, gold, I got nothing. But here is what I do have. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And suddenly, this man from birth, he's helped up by Peter. And this man who has from birth never been able to walk, finds that his legs are strengthened. And he leaps. He jumps up and begins to walk. And he enters the temple walking and leaping. In one instant, this man goes from someone who is easily passed by to someone who is in the worshiping community, who is part of the faith, who is able to go in and be with his family, who is able to go in and be a part of the worshiping community with those who have daily passed him by year after year after year. He is finally able to be with them to worship with them, to praise God in the temple. I can imagine what the people around thought. It probably took them a little while to recognize him. 
They probably saw him and said, who is that? Do I know him? Is he related to somebody? Who, who is that? And then it dawned on them. Wait. Wait. That's the man. That's, that's the one who sat at the beautiful gate. That's the one who has asked for alms for years and years. That's the one who has been lame from birth. And they were filled with wonder and amazement. What I find interesting about this story, though, is that this man is never named. We never learn something so basic as the name of the man who begged at the beautiful gate. Do his neighbors know his name? Do those going into the temple know his name? Do they know his story? Do they know what it was like for him to be lame from birth? Do they know what it was like for him to have to sit out day after day and beg for the chance to survive? Do we know what it's like when we pass by these strangers and we put up our blinders and we say, not today, going to do something else, do we know? Do we take time to see one another? Do we truly take time to see our neighbors? Do we truly take time to get to know them? We might see them physically, and then turn away. But do we take time to see into their very hearts? Do we know their names? Do we know their stories? Do we know who they are? What they love? What brings them joy? What inspires them? I think that when Peter looked into the eyes of the man at the beautiful gate, I think when he said, look at me, he looked into his eyes and he saw into his very soul. He saw the brokenness. He saw the longing for human connection. He saw the longing for belonging. He saw that desire to be welcomed and loved. He saw that hope that one day he could be a part of holy community. He saw the man. And what the man needed wasn't money. What the man needed was a chance to be a part of community. What the man needed was a chance to have his legs made strong so that he could go into the temple and praise God. He who has sat outside the temple and listened to the songs, listened to the scriptures, but never been allowed to be a part. He saw into that man's heart and gave him what he really, truly needed, a community and a home. Friends, take time to see. Take time to see those around us that we might know what they really need and how to truly meet those needs in ways that lift up human dignity, in ways that celebrate independence and passion, and in ways that show God's love 
truly. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we come to you in prayer, we lay our hearts before you. We admit to you our short-sightedness, but you already know that we think more of ourselves than our neighbors next door, let alone our neighbor that lives around the world. We get so caught up in the needs of our own houses that we forget to think about, much less pray for, people whom we've never met. As we try to pray for starving children in countries we cannot place on the map, as we attempt to join in solidarity with women and children being sold into slavery, as we struggle to comprehend the hardship that families face in trying to survive just one more day, the chasm between our quiet, sheltered life and their lives of turmoil becomes clear. We struggle even to see the other side of the divide. Oh God, can we believe that we know how to pray for their needs? when we honestly have no idea what their needs may be. And so humbled, we come before you now, placing our faith wholly in you, trusting that you know those needs which are obscured to our short-sighted eyes, believing that in your love and mercy you will reach out and touch the lives that we cannot comprehend. As we pray, Holy One, we feel your call on our lives. Our souls resonate with the challenge to shift our focus from inward desires to your outward plan for our world. We know with every fiber of our beings that you are calling us to be a part of your healing, life-giving work, both in our community and around the world. Lord of life, may our squinting glances across the distance of miles, language, and culture our desire to see your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, our prayer for our neighbors, not end with these words, but continue day by day, moment by moment in our actions. May this prayer, through your grace, transform our lives, and may all our words and deeds, all of our being be offered to you who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sing holy, holy. 
shining in the light of your glory. Now pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. High and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. live a life worthy of your calling, giving glory to God in all things. And may the God of glory, the Lord of life, and the Spirit of truth be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.